Hello everybody, today I'm going to finally share with you this interesting light bulb. So this is made by a company called VU1, and they say light without compromise on their website. So basically what this is, it uses ESL technology, which I believe is like electron stimulated luminance or something to that nature. Let me look over here and see. Yes, electron stimulated luminance. I had to look up on their website exactly how this thing works because I think it's similar to a CRT, or a cathode ray tube, at least from the teardowns that I have seen of these bulbs. The technology looks very similar. So basically it, it is pushing a whole bunch of electrons towards this coated surface, which then stimulates it and produces light. Now I'm assuming this is some type of phosphor that is being stimulated and producing the light. Could be wrong with all this, but uh, that's as far as I understand it. Anyway, here is the bulb itself. If you were to look it up on their website, uh, the ones that they show on there are a little bit different designs. So maybe this is an earlier design. This is in the shape of a PAR-30 or R-30 floodlight bulb that you would use in your standard recessed can light in the ceiling or some track lighting, for example. It does have some weight to it, so you probably do want to use it in just a can light because if you were to use it in your um, track lighting, it'd probably make it dangle down instead of at the angle you really want. So there's the ESL, uh, as they put it. It has a high power factor. It doesn't have any mercury because of how it is, because of the way it is. Um, it is 16.5 watts. And that's about it on the bottom here. And, of course, the bulb itself, you can see it's incredibly thick there just like the front of a CRT would be. So, let's go ahead and screw it into our socket here. Now, I have a little story behind this thing. I picked it up at, uh, oh, I think it was Value Village or something to that nature. Well, I picked up some other things that day and I thought, oh, it would be a really good idea to try to carry everything at once instead of getting a bag. So naturally, while walking out of the store, I dropped it on the ground and, um, I was yelling at my friend, I'm like, ooh, pick it up. And uh, he picked it up anyway, but it didn't break, amazingly. It dropped from about maybe three feet onto a concrete linoleum floor that they have in these places, and uh, it didn't break. But now it makes a weird ticking noise. However, I didn't test it in the store. Well, actually, I did test it in the store, um, and it worked. And it does still work, but it makes a weird ticking noise now, so maybe something's a little thrown off inside. But uh, yeah, enough of its little tragic incident. Let's go ahead and turn it on. Now I want to turn off, well actually maybe I want to leave it on so we can, uh, so the camera doesn't try to expose itself weird, but you'll see how it starts up here. See it started in the middle then glowed to the outside. You can also kind of see that mesh behind it there, like the CRTs have, the little holes, the little dots, the little screen, whatever that thing is called. There it does its ticking. I'm not sure what that's all about. Um, I'm going to set it down here. You can maybe hear the high-pitched noise, just like a CRT makes. So a lot of similarities there. Obviously, it's the same type of technology. Let me turn off all these lights. So, I'll hold it up here above the camera. And it has pretty good color. It's very warm white. So, obviously, if you like that, this is good for that. The only thing that, the reason why I wouldn't use this is because I dislike the high-pitched noise that it gives off. You know, you really don't realize that CRTs make that noise until you haven't heard one in a very long time. I guess that's the luxury of flat panel displays, uh, LCDs and all that kind of stuff. We don't have to hear this anymore. But it's interesting that the camera does pick up the little um, shield piece inside with all the little holes in it. At least I'm assuming that's what that is, because to the naked eye, I can't see it. And it's incredibly bright, but the camera picks it up. Very cool. It gets warm. Um, if I were to turn it off, I'm going to turn this light back on, see if you can hear the static. Do you hear the static? So, yeah, it's basically a CRT light bulb. Very cool technology. It looks like they do sell these things, actually or still sell these things. I don't even know the, what I just said. Uh, that's an issue. But um, yeah, it looks like they still sell these on their website. It looks like they're trying to develop a standard shape bulb as well. 
However, obviously a floodlight bulb is the easiest design for this um, type of technology. It's just really cool. I've seen a lot of these on the lighting sites and uh, heard about them once in a while. I know they're not exactly the cheapest thing to pick up and I've never really found one in a store. So it was really cool to find one of these finally at, uh, at the thrift store. And there it goes rolling away because it's too heavy. Just really neat technology. You know, if you were to compare this side by side, I had an incandescent one over here, you wouldn't know the difference. It really is, you know, amazing that they could fit all this in a bulb of such size. I'm going to turn it off and you can hear the static. That thing gets really hot. Wow, does that get hot. Let's turn it on again just watch it. Well, that was pretty cool. It sounded like an old uh, black and white television. Anyway, oh, another random fact, because I just thought of this. Um, I don't know why, but, uh, you know, when you're younger and you get your face close to the television, you can kind of smell the static. You know, the noise, you can smell it. Yeah. Yeah, that's what it smells like. It smells like static. Very random. This thing gets incredibly hot. I guess I didn't expect it to get that hot. It's as hot as an incandescent, maybe hotter, wow. Anyway, I've rambled about this thing for quite a bit of time here now. But, uh, yeah, I just wanted to share this cool technology. I don't know how much longer it'll be around. I'm sure as long as the company's around and they're willing to make it, it'll be around. But other than that, it was yet another step from transitioning from incandescent to a more energy-efficient lighting source. Now, obviously, LEDs have won that battle, but this was a candidate at one point in time. Anyway, I really do hope you enjoyed this video of this ESL floodlight bulb. Also, please comment, rate, share, and subscribe. And thank you very much for watching.